Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks Mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. You have seen me in this channel a couple of times discuss uh, networking between mainframes, uh, of course between emulated mainframes, and today I want to talk a little bit about the combination of two amazing technologies and what you can do when you combine these new additions to our beloved uh, emulated mainframes. Uh, it was specifically regarding networking mainframes. One thing that we've seen in the past is uh, that there is uh, this amazing technology. Let me switch to my browser here. So you can see here, we have this amazing um, repository, which is not created by me. I'm just hosting it for a person who's a friend of mine called Bob Polmenter. And he wrote a, a, a network job entry subsystem for MVS 3.8 because MVS 3.8 did not come with a network job entry capability. They came later. So job, uh, Bob just sat down and wrote um, a whole subsystem from scratch to enable MVS 3.8, our uh, 40 plus years old operating system that knew nothing about NG at the time to connect to other mainframes. And I'm hosting for Bob, as I, as I said, I did not contribute anything to this other than just testing and some ideas um, uh, to Bob, but uh, he wrote all this. And over the years, he's uh, um, removed some uh, small bugs that he had and added some features. And um, and I'm hosting it here and I'll put the description or the link to the to this repository in the description below this video that you're watching right now. But uh, this enables MBS 3.8 to be networked to other mainframes, be they either also MBS 3.8, they could also be VM 370 mainframes, they could even be uh, Linux, because Linux itself also has network job entry capability through some software that I'm also hosting here. I think it's this one, yep. So you could also network your mainframe to just your Linux or even to your uh, to your Windows, uh, VAX machines can connect to it, and I have shown all of this in this channel before. Now, what I want to show is that I've also spoken in the past about this uh, magnificent uh, contribution by Peter um, Jacob and Mike Rossman in Germany. They've added uh, Rex, or they call it Brex, to MVS 3.8, and why is that important? Because with uh, Rex, of course, we have uh, very simple scripting capability within MVS 3.8. And uh, MVS 3.8 did not come with Rex. That came much later. Rex was only added to MVS ESA. Even the MVS ESP and MVS XA did not come with Rex. So having Rex is very important in MVS. And now what uh, these two teams did by working together, Bob Polmenter on the one hand, and Peter Jacob and uh, Mike Rosman on the other hand, they made it possible to use Rex to write network job entry programs. And I'm going to show this in the short video today. They come together and they combine their uh, software and their technologies. You can create new and amazing possibilities. So I'm logged in here to my MVS 3.8, CK4 update 8, as you can see. And in this uh, system, uh, of course, we have uh, Brex installed. I, I don't even have the latest version. I think I'm still on 2.5.0, uh, whereas, whereas I think 2.5.1 or 2.5.2 is already has already come out. And I've shown many other capabilities of Brex on MVS, such as uh, full screen uh, applications, such as uh, reading and writing vSAM files. Uh, so you can write very complex applications with Brex on MVS 3.8. Uh, such that was not even possible when MVS 3.8 was actually released 40 plus years ago, 43, 44 years ago. So, uh, but also they, of course, as I mentioned, they added the capability for uh, for Rex or for Brex to be able to use network job entry natively within Brex. And so I have Brex installed here, and the other piece of software that I also installed is the uh, network uh, job entry subsystem for MVS 3.8 called ng38 and that's just the same as i am showing here in this browser so you can see that's exactly the version i mean i'm not running this exact version i'm running a slightly older version but that doesn't matter and uh what i can do then is once i have defined some links between two of my mainframes in this case this mvs mainframe and this vm mainframe here um, then I can, they can start communicating with each other. And I'm going to show you some of the amazing possibilities. So uh, first of all, let's see how um, 
ng is running here so uh, if we go to i'll show you that right now we have ng38 running as a subsystem so that's not a tso program that's not a, uh, a kicks program or anything like this this is its own subsystem it means it's an address space that's running independently of jest 2 and uh, uh the other thing is i've started here two other address spaces you can see here relay exec exec of course is jargon for rex program and another one called info they're running right now and they're running in their own address spaces but they're running as batch jobs of TSO. As you know, TSO, while it's, of course, a job that's, uh, as you can see here, it's a subsystem that's running um, um, on top of MVS 3.8, it can also actually be launched itself as a batch job. So that's one of the amazing things about uh, the mainframe is that everything can be run also as a batch job. So we're running now TSO as a uh, as an interactive uh, system here, but itself can then launch a copy of it, of itself, TSO, and run it as a batch job. And inside the batch job, we have two, uh, we have a program running here, Re Relay, which is a chat program, and Info, which is a general information program. So these are now running as independent subsystems. So if I now connect to it and say, tell uh, Info help, so I'm now connecting from a completely different mainframe, remote. These are on completely different machines, different parts of the world. It doesn't really matter because the network job entry uh, protocol is emanated on top of TCP IP. So it doesn't matter what those machines are. Of course, in the... Uh, oh, sorry. Tell info at gigs help. So I send now a message. Um, and as you can see here, this was received now by this info program and it sent an answer back. And it said that, you know, it's called info MVS version 0 0.4 running on this node here called how kicks. Um, and uh, it tells me what the what the commands are that I have available. So why don't we, um, oops, let's go back here. Why don't we go here to this window and we say uh stats give me some information oops i spelled it wrong you can see every command is received here and then the answer is sent back so current time ipl and uh what kind of machine this is it's tk4 minus i can also say hey, ipl date and it's going to go and hopefully fetch me when this machine was ipl'd And so we get the answer. So now this is one program running on, uh, um, here on, uh, on my MVS machine. And as we saw, I also have um, Relay, which is a chat program. So now I can say tell Relay at how kicks, log on. And now I'm logging on. And since this is, of course, all, all multi-user, now if somebody's on a different machine or I have a different user on the same VM uh, mainframe here on the left side, then that user could also, she could now send a command and also log in. And uh, and now they can start chatting. So um, I can say, uh, uh, hello. And if anybody else is logged in, then of course, um, as you can see here, this was received. Uh, now that other user is logged in, will also be able to uh, to get the message and they can chat with each other. And I've always had the fascination with uh, chat programs because they're easy to write and writing uh, chat servers enables you to understand a lot about the networking protocol and to um, to be efficient. And I also have a version where it actually you can federate between different mainframes so that if a mainframe is running a chat server such as the one that is running here right now, this one, and by the way, this is also all available on my uh, on my repository. I'll point to it in a second. So everybody could now run a version of this, and I have uh, and Relay Chat is able to federate between all mainframes, so that if a user logs into a channel on mainframe A um, and writes something, then other um, mainframes running the same software will be able to also exchange messages, even if the user is not logged in. To mainframe B, so I have federation and uh, uh, I can I have loop detection so that there's no message loops and 
you can ban users, all kinds of features. So um, we can also do here a help. And, uh, and then you get the help menu. As you can see here, and this save now the, the amazing thing is because this is written in Rex, this will run unchanged on anything. It can run on ZVM, it can run on uh, um, VMSP, it can run on uh, ZOS, it can run on anything that uh, knows Rex. And um, and I've shown this also in the past, but today I want to show you a little bit how this all works. Maybe uh, some more commands. Maybe let's try system. I don't know. I don't remember anymore what comes back. We also have rooms, so you can enter a, a different room than the general room and exit. Um, you can ban users who are not behaving. Um, so, as you can see here, just some uh, information about where the machine is sitting. Uh, this machine here, of course, is running in the in the cloud. Um, and uh, just some general information. I have, of course, the NG38 software running. And that is a prerequisite. First of all, let me show you how I actually launch um, the chat program or the other program, the info program from the MBS console. So uh, if you go to Proclib, where the procedures are stored, I should have here locate relay. Okay, so let's go in here. As you can see, what I'm doing, this is a simple procedure. I'm launching here TSO. This is the program for TSO. IKJ ETF01 and uh, we launch it with the parameter Brex exec no um, STAE so we don't want um, we don't want the uh, ability to uh, to issue STAE um, um, uh, macro calls and then um, we launch inside once that is running we then launch a, a simple um, a Rex program that's in this library and of course the TSO library needs to access the Brex program um, this Brex software and then uh, Brex itself needs to be able to access its own library for this all to work but uh, everything else is pretty standard so this launches a Rex program and now let's go look at the Rex program Um, oh, and as you can see, I also have an ELISA um, um, psychologist that uh, we could also launch this and then you can have a conversation with ELISA. Um, I have a file server that is able to, uh, where you actually can request files. You can have a directory and then, uh, and then it shows the directory files or directories available and then you can request it and then um, the file will be then sent to you through NGE. Um, we have, uh, this is the info program that we just saw before, the one that um, I was showing here. Let me show you again. Uh, tell info stats, no, at, you have to tell us, that, of course, at which node, stats. And so this, this program here uh, answering. So an MES information server for network job entry, as you can see here. Uh, let's go back to one terminal to make it easy to read. So um, so this is the program that uh, implements all that. Let's see how many lines we have. Uh, 300 lines, but it could also be done much, much uh, with many fewer lines. Um, but um, so let's go look at the the chat program because that's a bit more complicated and let's see what happens here so uh, i implemented this actually back in 2021 uh, as you can see here a long uh, version uh, history i've uh, made sure that this runs as i mentioned before on all rex capable mainframe operating systems such as vm zvm zos and everything in between um, and you can see here at some point i ported this I actually started this on VM and then later on I ported it to uh, Brex on MBS 3.8 version 275 here. Added uh, the room capability, um, etc. So uh, <clears throat> let's see what happens in this program. First, I set some uh, some global variables that we need during uh, uh, during the 
runtime of this program. And then I have some control. Uh, let me scroll down here, some control variables. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to catch error messages coming from the various operating systems. So um, this would be an operating system such as VM returning that the user is log not logged in because when you send a message to the other side, so this is the server, of course, where a, a client could, could connect and request something, but then uh, in the meantime, between sending a message and connect and then receiving an answer, maybe the user disconnected or the, or the user was kicked out for some reason. So there's never in NGE, in network job entry, there's never a guarantee that uh, that you that the user is there or that the link is there. So this is all storing forward. So there's no guarantees about um, about anything. So it, it could be that the user sends a request to the server. The server wants to answer. By the time the server answers, half a second later, two seconds later, the user is not there anymore. And now a message would come back. And so if if a message come back comes back with an error message, of course you need to capture that and not send the not interpret that as a as a normal chat message because then that will be sent to everybody and you can actually create very quickly and very easily you can create message loops there i once had i was on a flight actually and i had some people testing my chat server and i had a bug somewhere and um, and within a couple of seconds i had half a million messages being uh, sent back and forth so yeah error message capture is very important also um the operating systems, uh, specifically VM, which is much better with network, network job entry, also because network job entry uh, protocol, the protocol was actually invented and implemented first on VM 370. So VM feels much more comfortable with our, with uh, NGE. So it has a looping detection, but it doesn't always work. Um, then there's other messages that we need to capture. And so we try to capture uh, all these error messages and uh, but that is even not enough so we need to still have a loop condition where we receive a message that came in uh, first of all what is the rate of messages so if the messages are coming very quickly you could actually have a loop going on also you need to see if the message is is very similar to the one that was sent out and that it will be another uh, loop condition that you can detect so and uh, and so now comes some you can see some of the very beautiful things about uh, Brex on MVS 3.8. This, uh, this is specifically uh, stuff about uh, the Rex that we have on our magnificent uh, MVS 3.8, such as uh, call WTO. So you can actually issue a message to the console. This will be write to operator WTO. You can actually issue it from uh, a Rex program. And that's uh, what we see. So this is just to tell it that we're starting uh, relay that we're starting to program and uh, and that it's uh, and any other options that we want to put in. So already this is is a nice addition to uh, Rex on MVS. And then uh, here we have our own um, our own uh, user ID. And here, as you can see, something we register with NG38. So NG38 is an address based subsystem running on MVS independently of this program here. So we need to register with it. And that's one feature that I actually had uh, su suggested to Bob Polmenter when he wrote NG38 first, and he actually implemented it. And we did a lot of back and forth and making sure it works. And we worked together on this. So uh, very, very happy with this feature because now any other program, not just a, an online TSO user can use NG38. So then uh, if we connect, um, uh, we will show this to the console, then we initiate the environment. And this is, by the way, all amazing work done in cooperation between Bob Polmenter on, on the NGE side and uh, Mike Rosman and Peter Jacob in Germany on the REC side. So, and I kind of encourage both of them to work together and they did. So thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, uh, Mike. Thank you, Peter. Amazing cooperation. Um, so uh, then we check if we got the registration done with NG38. Uh, if not, we will deal with it. And if yes, we will just tell the operator that uh, it has registered. And then we, um, of course, have some log handling so we can log to files and see if there's any errors. 
and um, so here is the uh, main loop that receives uh, messages so uh, do forever so that's the handling loop that's constantly listening for um, for uh, for messages coming in because this as I mentioned is a server so it gets a message and then it waits um, if we don't wait then this address space would use all the CPU because it would constantly loop around this so we need to have it some slow um, some slowing down and wait uh, otherwise it would just use all the available CPU power of course um, MVS 3.8 is um, is MP capable you can have two CPUs and it works quite well not completely without issues but I would say 99.9% .9 it works fine but we still don't want to use CPU if we don't really have to um, so then when there is an event uh, we get the event and then we go and process it. Uh, we split between, uh, we remove, so we inform the operator that some that some message was received, and then we go <clears throat> to process it. If there is any abnormal termination, we will handle that, of course, and deregister from NG38 so that NG38 is not there, uh, left out hanging in the in the cold. Um, and then. Um, we handle all incoming messages. When the message is received, it's stored in data. So we must parse it. Uh, it's being passed to this function from uh, the do forever. So um, we're, we're handle message here and we pass it uh, the payload basically. And so here we're handling it and we strip um, anything that is not payload itself and um and uh and then based on what it is so if we, it's a who uh, program um, you know request then we will go and handle that if it's a statistics log off log on we should have log on here somewhere uh, etc so room echo heartbeat all the various uh, functions that we enable they're just we pass the payload to that function and we uh we say call help uh, let's say it's it's a help, a request for help, uh, slash help. Then we call help user with the user ID and note. We need the user ID, which we, which we extracted, so we can send then a message back to that user. And the node we also need, so we know at which node this user exists. And that's, how, and that's why it doesn't matter where user connect to, as long as they have a connection, uh, they will always be able to send a message and receive a message. And then um, we can take the help user um, as an example. Uh, find help user, of course, and here's the function. So, um, as you can see here, we get the user ID uh, and the note. We get it as an argument to the function. So now we uh, reassemble a user with user ID and note because we need to give it uh, to NGE as an argument when we send any message. We need to say user and node, and then the message. And then uh, we'll list here all the available functions. So that's the, that the help. So we can now see uh, this function running in real time when we switch to two terminals. So let's do here. Tell, um, was it relay and how kicks help. So now we're involving, uh, we're, uh, we're invoking this function. And so now this exact function is being executed as we speak and send back. So you can see here, that's exactly it. So, um, so that's how it works for every, and then of course we have, we must have some out of band um, messages such as announcing. So if a new user logs in, this will go through the list of all the logged in users, which is kept in memory and send them the, in a message that a new user has joined and who that user is. So that is an out of band. So people are, you know, this is not a response to anything. This is sent on its own by the, by the chat server when a new user logs in. Also, there is a, a timeout. So when a user has been logged on for a while, but didn't send any messages, it will be logged out. Why is that important? Because of what I mentioned before. Um, 
if you remember, it's, there's no guarantee that the users are there. Oh, let me go here. So, and so it could be that the user logged out or the connection was dropped or the system crashed or something. So we need, to, uh, and if, if we don't remove inactive users, we will constantly then, every, if there is a active discussions going on in the chat channel, then every message will be also be attempted to be delivered to user that is not existing anymore, is not online anymore. And then that will, that will create, of course, a return error message and we have to process that. And so that can quickly, if there is, you know, 50, 60, 100 users um, not available anymore, but uh, you're still delivering messages to them, it can quickly spiral out of control. So you need to check for that. And that's because of the nature of the protocol, right? With TCP IP, we have a, we have a socket that is still open or it should be open. I mean, that is also one of the issues with, with TCP IP to some extent that, you know, you, you also need to time out sockets, but it's much less, um, it's much less, uh, uh, of a problem with uh, TCP IP than it is with NG38 because NG38 is a stateless protocol. There is, there's no open socket, right? There's no open socket between this application, the chat server and the client. It's every time it's a new connection, kind of like with a web, it's actually very similar to a web um, protocol where every page is again in a new request. You fill out a form and it's again a new request and then it needs to answer. And there's no guarantee that the client will ever respond. But but um, in in the web, the client doesn't have to respond. So it's a little But NGE. You cannot count on anything being there. So that's why you need to check for, uh, check out. And, we need, and that means, of course, we need to refresh the time. So every time that... Uh, 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 this Rex program comes back from a wait um, condition, it will have to recalculate the time. So then we can recalculate every time again who is, needs to be removed from the list of active users because they're uh, they've timed out. So as I said, that's why I like writing chat programs because you need to learn a lot about the environment, the networking, etc. So. This is where I actually keep a double linked list in memory. Um, I wrote this once and, uh, and, and it's been, and it served me well. So uh, Rex itself doesn't have complex constructs such as uh, linked lists or even arrays are kind of strange in Rex, to be very honest. So this is a way to um, uh, keep a list, uh, a double linked list of users in memory. And um, so we have an initialization of the linked list. And then uh, we, know, we can tell, of course, the size. And that's how we know how many users are online. If, if, if somebody asks, you know, who is online, um, then we can uh, understand how many users are online because we can get the size of the double linked list. Then we can delete a user from the double linked list. We can get uh, all the arguments of a user and um, we can add we can add a user or of course we can show which is just uh, going through the list and uh, showing the, uh, the 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 elements in the double linked list so this is important um, so because otherwise if you had to put it into disk um, that wouldn't be so good and an array on its own is not a great um, of course the, this double linked list here is based on array but it's able to remove um, and add users uh, in, in, a, in a simplified way from an API point of view. Uh, here we have further down, we have high rate. So when too many incoming messages per second, um, then exit the server to avoid, uh, um, you know, uh, taking over the CPU completely, make the system irresp uh, irresponsive. So uh, here we check the rate and uh, how many messages have come in per second. And uh, <clears throat> and that is very important as well when you deal with network job entry subsystems. And then if we have it here, generalized uh, error handling. So this is uh, how it works. And, uh, and uh, it's actually quite scalable. Um, I've uh, shown this with uh, over uh, 300 users and uh, sending messages at the same time um, wrote uh, wrote some scripts on uh, unix 
And, and that's also the nice thing about NG because it also runs on Linux. Now you can very easily script and you can have bash script that send messages. And, uh, and uh, I could uh, try to understand what are the limits of this NG38 on MVS. So even though this machine where I'm running this uh, NG38 uh, subsystem is not the fastest, I think it's a 1.8 gigahertz. And of course, then we have the Hercules overhead and we have MVS, etc. It was able to handle upwards of 300. It's been a couple of years since I did the benchmark, but I think it was over 300. I have it written down somewhere. So quite scalable. And I'm sure it, you know, it could be done even more scalable. So I also have an implementation of this very same thing again in Assembler. And I haven't benchmarked it yet, but I'm quite sure it will be much more uh, scalable because uh, Rex, of course, is interpreted. And, uh, and, uh, and it's probably not the fastest way to do it. But uh, So I have all kinds of things. And maybe we can use... I haven't looked at this in a while. But... Uh, <coughs> I want to see I want to see how this Eliza works so same thing again uh, you must register somewhere let's find register it's been a while since I looked at this oh actually I think it's this one find register yeah so this is the version that runs uh, in batch and uh, and then you just have a, a very simple Eliza program. Um, nothing, uh, nothing too fancy here. Um, so uh, this is it. I mean, I, you know, we, I, I'm so amazed that uh, we have two very distinct technologies, such as uh, such as NGE uh, for MVS. And then we have a Rex for MVS, and both of the systems were not delivered with MVS 3.8 back in 19, when was it, 79, 1980, when 3.8 came out. Uh, it was not part of MVS, but uh, people out there, uh, enthusiasts, uh, went out there and added this amazing capability, uh, capabilities and added it to MVS. And now we can combine these two and create amazing... Uh, amazing uh, new possibilities so uh, yeah, I, I, it's it's really quite amazing what the community has accomplished and that's just one example right there's a lot more uh, software and a lot more technology that has been added to MVS 3.8 specifically over the last um, uh, I want to say three four years it has really accelerated because once you have one subsystem or one capability, then somebody can build on top of that, and then somebody else comes in and builds something else. So uh, this is really quite amazing. Now, what I want to mention also is that if you don't want to go and get NG38 from my repository and install it, even though I have videos how to do it in this channel, and if you don't want to go get uh, Rex or Brex for MVS3.8 TK4 by Jurgen Winkelmann and go there and install it on your own, of course, we always have the option of going and getting a machine, uh, a mainframe that's already pre-configured for all that. And that would be uh, Rob Prince TK4. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. I switched the browser. So uh, if you go to uh, Rob Prince TK4 Rob, then you will find this here. And he has a ready-made mainframe. You just have to download it and start it. And it has, uh, let me see, NGE. It has NGE installed, the latest version. It has Brex installed. Let me look for that. Yeah. So 252, which is much newer than the one that I have running here on my mainframe. Um, it has the latest uh, editor. It has the latest uh, monitor. It has a bunch of... Uh, um, bunch of fixes uh, some stuff that I have added to it as well it also has a um, a uh, an, an online transaction processing monitor called intercom so which is kind of like kicks but it's not kicks it's uh, something else but very capable so it has I want to say the full uh, function spectrum of kicks but it's something we can legally use um, it has uh, 
Algol uh, 2.1 by uh, Tom Armstrong. And I'm in the process of making sure that we can get Algol 68 added as well. We have the software, but right now we have some issues building it. But I'm working with Rob Prince to add Algol 68 as well. Um, so that if, because this um, Algol here, Algol 2.1, this is Algol 60. But Algol 68 was a very uh, important uh, extension of Algol 60. And during, of course, as you saw in one of my previous videos, during the specification of Algol 68, that's when uh, Niklas Wirt for, uh, went out and created Pascal as an answer to that. So there's a lot of history here as well. <laughs> so uh, there's so much history in this uh, 40 years old uh, system that is being put together with all these amazing capabilities. And of course, we have uh, the one thing that a lot of people will like, of course, is that we have ISPF and that's not uh, the IBM ISPF. Somebody went out there and re-implemented ISPF from scratch. Uh, so there's no, uh, there's no code entanglement whatsoever. This is uh, completely legal and uh, re-implemented uh, a compatible version of ISPF for MBS 3.8. So you can just go and download this and run this and then you have everything that you've seen uh, in uh, that you've seen here you will also have uh, already built in and updated even to the latest version. Uh, and I recommend you do that and then uh, check my other videos and see how you can connect between machines. I have plenty of NG38 videos and you can uh, go there and, uh, and find out. If you want to search my videos, I, I sometimes get this question. How do I search all your videos? You can go to moshix.tech and there is a way here to search uh, my videos. You type in here, I don't know, let's say NGE. And you can see here I have three videos soon to be added. One more. Uh, this particular video you're watching right now that shows you how to get NG working on your machine uh, and to make connections. So very, very interesting stuff. And I will put the links uh, to all the websites that I mentioned here. And um, so you can go and play with the stuff if you want to. Uh, if you have any more questions on how to get this all working, then of course you should be joining the Discord channel um, where we have thousands of people um, um, discussing all these things and people will be able to help you there how to accomplish this. I am myself some, sometimes there as well. So I'll put in also the description of uh, or an invite to the Discord channel in the description below this video so you can just click on it and join in and, uh, and start uh, networking the mainframes and using all this amazing software and hopefully even contribute some of your uh, ideas and some of your technology as well. Thank you for watching and goodbye.